general aviation in this country has been part of our being for the last century. And Britain has led aviation in the past and I want to see it lead aviation in the future. You must have been frightened. The pilot was seriously old and experienced. A man such as yourself. <laughs> If I had a parasol on my back, I would actually jump out and like, do you know, yeah. Do you mean a parasol or a parachute? Parachute. A parasol might, might not be quite <laughs> effective. We've just departed Old Warden Airfield and my guest today is Kanchana Gamagay, who's a leading light in bringing diversity into aviation and founder of the Aviatrix project, also a pilot of course as well. Uh, welcome to Cockpit Conversations. Thank you Mike, and what an introduction, thank well, you very much. I think it's a, a very fair one to be honest with you. We, I've known you for a, a good few years now yeah. and I, I love what you do. And we'll, we'll talk more about that in a second, but let's first of all find a little bit about you because you well, started a career as a teacher. I did, yes. No, I actually trained to be a primary school teacher, and then, you know, carried on, became a head teacher, and I've been in lecturing in education, and uh, yeah, here I am. So still involved in education, um, but you know, certainly not directly um, working with young people that way. What attracted you to teaching in the first place? Um, I think, well, to be honest, Mike, I mean, I wanted to be a pilot since I was about three. Um, we come on to that, but you know, that didn't materialise, and. Uh, you know, I love working with young people and I just wanted to inspire them to do more than what they thought was possible. So teaching seemed like a really natural um, progression, really, um, into, into getting to do that. So it was what led you into aviation? What was the interest in aviation in the first place then? Well, like I said, you know, it, it came from childhood and uh, we lived very close to Colombo Airport and almost on the approach, really, or oh, under the approach. And uh, just used to see these, you know, jumbos flying in and out and... Uh, over the ocean and thought, well, you know, I'd love to do that one day and uh, just never left me. Um, got some traffic. I saw that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always great having a, having a pilot with you on these sort of uh, interviews. Well, because you're is it good or, you know, I'm, no, I I'm, think, I'm th not being a backseat driver, that's for sure. I'll no, let you do but, the flying. <laughs> but despite, obviously we're, we're involved in the conversation as well as, as trying to fly the plane. Well, and, uh, absolutely. Fly the plane first, aviate first, yeah. as they say. <laughs> aviate, navigate and communicate. Indeed. You've been running the Aviatrix project now for five years. What's your, what would you say, your raison d'etre? What's, what's the reason for it it's being? Yeah, I mean, so it'll be our sixth year this, you know, this November, and um, it started because I actually, it took me so long to have the finances and the confidence to actually go and do my flight training in 2015. Um, and I just started to see, whilst the, the world of aviation is really welcoming, there's so much we need to do to get women and girls into it. But also, you know, it is an expensive elite world. There's no getting around it. Doing this is not the norm, you know. We are very lucky to be up here and very privileged. So um, I thought I've got to do something to set something up to, to give people more opportunities, but also to raise awareness of it. Because, you, you know, I've worked in schools where the kids wouldn't even dream of thinking of being a pilot or going into aerospace and uh, I just wanted to open up the world for, for young people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how it came about. Is it fair to say you were focused more on the female side at first and it's, and it's developed or was it always about young people in general? It's been, it's been both to be honest, Mike, but I think, you know, the fact that the, the challenges that I had in terms of not having role models and, and then meeting some female pilots and being really comfortable, you know, I've been really lucky in all the flying that I've done, and I've done a fair bit of flying in the last sort of five, six years, um, you know, and I've been to quite a lot of airfields in Europe and, and the UK. I've never experienced anything but positivity, but I know that people have, um, and that's why I think, you know, the women and girls angle was the, the, which is why it was called the Aviatrix Project. So it was our main angle, but actually it's, it's grown into so much more than that. You yeah. know, it's about young people, it's about people from a bunch of backgrounds, adults, you know, anyone really who wants to get into flying. I'm very happy to help them. Yeah, and I guess at that time it was probably quite a big thing about getting more females involved in aviation as well, I should think, five or six years ago. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's... Uh, 
be honest, you know, we've been having this conversation for like 20 odd years, I think, and I don't know if a lot has changed. Yes, there's been some progress, and it's great to see airlines like EasyJet, you know, talking about women in aviation. And it, you know, last few years, it's certainly become a big thing, hasn't it? And yeah, a regular thing is it to have female pilots. If you've gone a, a commercial airliner, you know, if there's a female pilot, you always see one of the passengers having a bit of a laugh and joke about whether they're going to be able to park it and, and that sort of thing. Do you think there's any uh, advantages to a female, anything they bring to the role in particular? I think it's, you know, perhaps personalities, but I also think, like, it's like with any job, isn't it? You need to have people from lots of different backgrounds and genders coming in. You're bringing in different ideas, you're bringing in different sensitivities, different skills into it. Um, so I don't think, you know, just being a woman, um, you know, makes you a better or worse pilot. It, it's just got to be the best people for the job. If you're talking commercial, um, there's probably a few more now, private pilots out in general aviation. I'm meeting a few more. But certainly, you know, go, we, we flew from Old Warden today um, and we've flown from other airfields together, Mike. You know, you don't often meet female pilots, private or otherwise. Um, you know, it, it's still very, very low numbers um, we're looking at. But, yeah, I think, you know, different people bring different things into a, into a role. So yeah. it's, it's important to have a mix. I think that's one of the things I really respect about you and what you do is you're not really a fan of positive discrimination, are you, in any form? No, and it's it's really funny because I've been asked to do lots of interviews and various things and all, you know, even things like, can you come and do some modeling for our, like, plane covers and things? I mean, this is not really what I want to do because actually I don't believe that just because I'm a woman um, and also an Asian woman that I should, you know, I tick a few boxes, you know, can you come and promote our product or can you come and talk about diversity? That's not really what I'm about. I'm more about the fact that I don't want people to get to their 30s and have had this lifelong dream that they've not been able to achieve for whatever reason. Um, you know, I want to make sure that people don't get to, much, to the stage that I did and, and help them much, much younger. Um, that's really what it's about. And I don't, you know, I don't, I really don't believe in positive discrimination, which probably sounds weird given what I do and what I've actually set up. But. Yeah, but, I, but that is one of the things I do th really, really respect you for because I think that is a fantastic attitude to, to have. What do you say that there are still a lot of... I mean, when I was started becoming involved in aviation like 20 years ago, uh, it was sort of a... It seemed to be like an old man, middle-aged man's sport, you know, hobby. And there's still a lot of old dinosaurs around out there. Yeah. What do you say to them when, you know, if they have a cocky comment about a, a female pilot? Have you got a, a standard well, line? I think it depends really on where you go. I mean, I've flown into Lost Leicester, for example, and, uh, you know, they've asked who I've come in with and, you know, I've been on my own. And I think people, if you're friendly with people, you know, often, you know, if you, and also if you can fly the aircraft, I think that's really important. You know, if they've seen you fly in and fly out and you can land the thing um, and park it, I think, you know, there's not a lot of people can say to that. No. I mean, I park an aeroplane better than I park a car. So uh, <laughs> not much people can say about that. No. So what, what sort of things do you do to actually attract people into the industry then? What's your standard project? Um, you mean by young people? Yeah. Yeah, so we, we go all the way from sort of age two, three, all the way up really. Um, so they range from things like assemblies, school visits, we do workshops. We've done quite a lot of events at Shuttleworth actually. So at their air show days, um, we've been invited to do, um, work as part of their discovery days, offering um, you know activities for, for the public as well. Um, We've worked at Bentley Priory, for example, promoting the Battle of Britain Memorial Day. Um, you know, I offer mentoring as well. So when I say I, the, the, the project, we've got lots of volunteers who are commercial pilots, military pilots, etc., who will offer mentoring for young people for six to 12 month period. So um, parent talks, parent support, um, taste of flight. So they've been really popular um, actually to offer to, to young people who wouldn't necessarily get that opportunity um, and also adults as well, you know, we've, we've got young, you know, people who were my age who could not afford to, to get into flying. Um, it's been really great to offer them that opportunity because I was that person six years ago. You know, I've been really lucky to have some amazing opportunities recently. Um, but, you know, until 2015, I didn't have the means to go flying. So, um, you know, if I can help someone to go flying much earlier than that, I'm, um, I'm very happy to do that. Yeah, and of course, it's not just pilots you're trying to encourage, as you mentioned, it's people into the whole aviation industry. Yeah. And people talk a lot about STEM subjects nowadays. I'm not really convinced that everyone understands what STEM is and what's the, what it stands for. Yeah, so STEM essentially is um, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And that's actually what I do for my day job. So the Aviatrix project runs itself now with volunteers and things. But And obviously that's, that's my life passion. 
um, but I actually work for a, a STEM charity promoting STEM careers into uh, to schools and working with businesses as well. And, uh, you know, I do see, um, you know, the, the real benefits of doing that. And, you know, it can seem like one of those old buzzwords, you know, is it another cliche, is it another initiative? Um, but actually it's been going for a really, really long time. Um, we just call it something fancy nowadays. Um, but, you know, if, if it's about young people or people being able to see someone they can be. If you can't connect with someone on the stage or someone doing a job, um, you know, if they're not from the same background as you, from the same ethnicity maybe, or the same gender, same kind of age range, you're, you, you just can't connect to that. You know, and that connection is really important where people can see other people. I've had young people in school say to me, oh, what, well, you did that? You know, where are you from? And, and, and it's not just, I don't just mean it's about, you know, ethnicities, but these things are important because some young people will only see a white male pilot on a stage or, or on their holidays or on the TV. Of course, that's changing a lot more and it's a lot better now, um, representation-wise. But, you know, if they can imagine and talk to you and, and get your experience and find out that, you know, it's not been easy for you and you've had to work really hard to get to where you are as well. I guess yeah. it, it can, you know, it can really inspire people. I really get that. I, I guess if you, you know, got a, a young group of 15-year-olds and you've got a, you know, a 65-year-old ex-BA, posh BA captain, um, it might get a different reaction to a, you know, a young 20-something female who's just made it to Easy Day or something. It's yeah, absolutely. Great, yeah. You know, and, and you need both. And I, we've got, uh, I would say, about 35, 40% of our volunteers are male. Um, this is not just, you know, about having women up there. It's just about women, women, women. Absolutely not. We need women and men to work together really well to make things happen, to make businesses thrive, to make volunteering happen. So it's really important that, you know, young people we work with or people we work with know that it's not just about that um, you know that you need both look at us you know we're both genders different ages different ethnicities backgrounds yeah. um, and you know we're working here together so it, you know it, it, that's what makes it really successful I think yeah I don't think you're much older than me are you no <laughs> no just a few years Mike <laughs> <laughs> you've described uh, flying as one of your well, your favorite thing in the whole world what, yeah. what is it about flying that does it I mean just being up here just to be able to do something that is so different and you know it's not about escapism but just this is a different world yeah it's an absolutely different world up here and um you know you, you just don't have the worries of of the world and i just think it you know how how lovely how privileged to be able to do this and to experience something that not many people get to experience and you know leonardo da vinci was right you know once you've tasted flight <laughs> yeah here we are I've seen you quote uh, Amelia Earhart on your, I think it's on your website as well as on your, your talks, yeah. isn't it? What, what's your favourite saying? Yeah, so she talks about building runway. So she says that, you know, if you've got a runway built for you, great, take off on it. But if you haven't, grab a shovel and uh, build one build so one. that you can take off and others can follow you. Um, and that's really kind of what I try and do because, you know, what? I didn't grow up in a, in a wealthy family. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't have that runway built for me, so I had to build one, I had to work hard, save, and do all these things to, to get to where I am. Um, and, you know, if I can offer those opportunities to other people, then uh, I feel like that's kind of, that's worthwhile, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And what, what sort of flying do you do now? What do you enjoy? Um, doing this kind of thing, actually. Yeah. I like to just bimble around and uh, see the English. I love England, so I love going, flying around England and seeing the countryside and uh, also rivers, bridges. Yeah, I have a, you know, real passion for bridges as well and uh yeah flying to france next week hopefully with some friends so Excellent. yeah it, it just opens up the world doesn't it it's and um very sociable thing to do oh, Bigger. oh yeah there. that's good to see i didn't know you had a tea cast in here oh yes <laughs> it certainly helped where's this airfield Hang on, there it is, right? Yeah. Just there. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. That's the hangers, right? Yep. Are you visual? I think so. Okay. Yeah. If not, it's a nice field to land on. Yeah. Let's it try it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, look, can you see one? Can you see the road? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Then. I mean, you've got somebody taxiing across, can you see from the, yeah. the parked hangers? Good, it's where we thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> this took a little while. It's just there, Mike, in case you're looking yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> Board traffic. 
Echo Golf Student, Archie Kilo Echo is in the overhead at uh, 2,000 feet and the ascending dead side for zero 02 right now. Is there any any part of the uh, of the sort of whole flight experience that you like most? Is it landing, taking off, the the flight in between, the navigating, the taking the off. views? Do you like taking yeah, off? Yeah, the take off because that's just the beginning of it all. Yeah. Yeah. And when once we landed, it's all over, I suppose. Well, exactly. I I I do like the landing sequence because it's I think it's the most it's the sort of most skillful bit, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the most challenging, absolutely. Which is probably why I prefer it the least. Yeah, well, yeah maybe, maybe. You're much more experienced than I am, that's why. I think we were just talking on the way over about this runway here being zero two one end and two zero the yeah. other. And how that uh, could lead to some uh, complications. Yeah, I could see that being quite confusing for students, yeah, actually. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. And it's not the easiest one to find, which is obviously why solo students wouldn't come here. No. I did my first solo at Duxford, which is not far from here, of course. Not far at all, and it's nice and easy to find that, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a very forgiving runway. <laughs> How was your first solo and, and uh, first cross-country? Did oh, you enjoy it? Loved it, absolutely loved it. I can't think of anything better than flying alone. I know people find it boring, but I just love it. Oh, I, d I do like a little bimble in the yeah. evening, yeah, it's lovely if you can, so... Oh, Warden Traffic, uh, Golf Killer Echo, Cessna 172 is now downwind, zero 02 right hand. To land. Okay. I'll stop talking now so you can focus. It was great to catch up and fly with Kanchana again. I really admire her commitment, not just to bringing women and girls into aviation, but also promoting diversity in the industry and helping young people from disadvantaged backgrounds fulfill their dreams. If you'd like to find out more, can offer help, or would like to explore the opportunities the Aviatrix Project offers, check out the website, theaviatrixproject.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so we can let you know where we're heading off to next and who we're going to meet. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Cockpit Conversations and thanks for watching.